Central Police in Ecuador and with the Galapagos National Park Rangers. Uh, we've built up a really good anti-poaching force there. We have a patrol bo boat, a surveillance barge in the Northern Islands. We have our own canine unit, which is uh, sniffing out shark fins at the ports and the airports. We have a, a network of informants there. And uh, this year we've been installing an AIS system, a surveillance system for the entire national park to monitor vessel traffic in and out so we know what's going on there. 300,000 sharks a year are taken out of the Galapagos National Park Marine Reserve. We're trying to cut that down. And uh, every year we're getting more and more successful on that. So our reasoning for being in the Galapagos, if we can't save a place as incredibly unique, as beautiful, as, as awesome as the Galapagos Islands, we're not gonna save anything. So that is our line in the sand and that's why, that's why we're so active there. We also took the Steve Irwin this year to uh, the Mediterranean and uh, to take on the bluefin uh, tuna poachers. The bluefin tuna should be an endangered species. It should have been listed by the Convention on the International Trade in Endangered Species this year. But the problem was is that Japan and China went in there and bought off everybody with bribes and uh, every single marine species that was to be listed. Five species of sharks, the polar bear, the bluefin tuna, and two species of coral were not listed and uh, pretty much compromised the integrity of uh, the Convention on the International Trade in Endangered Species. Because we're dealing with this thing called the politics and economics of extinction. People are making money off of the extinction of species. They want them to go extinct. And that might sound a little strange, but the bluefin tuna is the best example of this. Mitsubishi has built large refrigerated warehouses in Japan. And into those warehouses, they're putting the bluefin tuna. They already have a four year supply. They want a 10 to 15 year supply. The more bluefin they pack into these tunas, and keep in mind, one bluefin tuna, one fish is worth $75,000 to $125,000 a piece. The most expensive fish in the world. And they're packing them in by the tens of thousands into these warehouses. The more bluefin tuna in the warehouses, the fewer there are in the wild. And as the, the population in the wild is diminished, the value in the warehouses goes up. And once they're extinct in the wild, and all dead in a warehouse, you have a million dollar fish and billions of dollars worth of profits for Mitsubishi. They are deliberately setting out to exterminate that species for profit. And this is happening all over the world with all of our fisheries. Every single, every commercial fishery in the world, except for the Alaska wild salmon fishery, is in a state of economic collapse. The United Nations says by 2048 there will be no commercial fishing anywhere in the world and it will all have collapsed. I think they're being awfully off optimistic, I say about 2025. And shark populations are taking 75 to 80 million sharks out of the ocean every year. For what? Shark fins for the Chinese market. The problem is, is you know, we, we look on the shark, or we've been taught to look on the shark as some sort of monster. The average number of people killed by sharks every year is five. We kill 70, to 80 million of them. Who's the monster? By the way, the average number of people killed by ostriches every year is 100. <laughs> ostriches are 20 times more dangerous than sharks. The average number of people killed by soda pop machines falling on them every year is nine. So the pop machines are more dangerous than sharks. And it's more dangerous to play golf than it is to swim and dive with or surf with sharks because more people are killed every year by lightning strikes on golf courses than are killed by sharks. The shark is not a monster. What it is, though, is the apex predator in the ocean. It has shaped evolution for 450 million years. It is an integral part of our oceanic ecosystems. And if we lose it, we really put our entire oceanic biodiversity in jeopardy. It is absolutely essential. What we're trying to get across is this message that the fish in the ocean is more important swimming in the sea than it is on people's plates. Why? Because a healthy fish population keeps the integrity of our seas intact. And right now we have removed 90% of all of the large fishes in the world. The northern cod collapsed, orange ruffy collapsed. And the reason for this is people don't understand what fish are all about. Nobody really thinks about it too much. It comes in a can or down in the fish market, the Pike Street Market. But the fact is the salmon takes four years to become sexually mature and dies. An orange ruffy takes 45 years to become sexually mature and lives to be 200 years old. Mm -hmm. A northern cod lives to be two centuries old. Uh, these are long living creatures and they cannot, simply cannot compete with uh, our constant demands. 
there simply is no longer enough fish in the oceans to continue to feed the ever-expanding populations of humanity. And if they go, if we wipe them out, the oceans die. And if the oceans die, we die. It's as simple as that. We cannot live on this planet with a dead ocean. We need the oceans to survive. Everything that we have ever built up in civilization will just completely disappear if those oceans die. And the oceans are in trouble. Jacques Cousteau said just before he died, the oceans are dying in our time. And if the navies of the world had any sense of moral responsibility, they'd be out there defending our oceans instead of playing their silly little war games with each other. And that's the problem. We have all of the treaties. We have all of the laws. We have all of the regulations we need to protect our oceans. What we lack is the economic and political will to enforce them because there's simply no money in enforcing conservation regulations and it's profit that drives these. And it's becoming very, very difficult because we're finding that the corporations, for instance, this year for the first time, we found New Zealand and the United States selling out the whales before the International Whaling Commission. Ever since 1986, we could depend upon the United States to defend the whales. And now, they compromised. I have to say, you know, I voted for President Obama, but I won't vote, vote for him again because he sold out the whales. And uh, it's unfortunate. He also turned over the keys to the country to BP. But uh, that'll soon, more information will be coming out there. I think there's a serious problem in the, in, the, in the Gulf of Mexico, a very serious problem that has yet to be revealed. There's more going on there than appears. But by the way, we don't have to worry about it. According to the Fox Network, it's all over. The oil's all over. Yeah. Fine. It's all, uh, the future is secure. So uh, anyway, that's where we are with that. But we will be returning uh, on December 1st uh, with our fleet. Uh, we will uh, go head to head with the, the Japanese fleet again. We expect that they will be much more aggressive this year because they took out one of our ships and got away with it. So, uh, because that's pretty much given them the green light to be even more aggressive, but we'll have to be prepared for that. I should point out one thing uh, to show you how compromised uh, these reports are. The Australian investigation onto the sinking of the Audi Gill said that uh, it was inconclusive as to who was responsible because the film was of such poor quality, we couldn't make a determination. Now, let me point out, this was the most documented collision in history. There were four cameras on it mm -hmm. at the time. Four cameras that happened to be high definition cameras for a television show. But according to the Australian report, poor quality and therefore, and anybody can see that the ship on the starboard side has the right of way and it was very obvious that the Audi Gill was on the starboard side. But again, the politics comes into play and Japan has a lot of friends. And the most amazing thing about it is that the Audi Gill was a New Zealand registered vessel with a New Zealand captain, and the New Zealand government did nothing. They said, well, actually, we shouldn't have been there. If we hadn't have been there, it wouldn't have happened. So the problem is, is that we're there because they don't have the courage to go down there and defend the oceans, even though their citizens are 80% in support of them doing so. They're not representing their, their citizens, they're not representing the environment, they're not representing the whales. What they are is representing the trade deals between Japan and New Zealand, as is Australia. The trade deals between those, as is the United States. The United States has the law and the ability right now to shut down all whaling operations by simply enforcing a packwood Magnuson and Pelley Amendments to the United States Department of Commerce regulations that says that if any nation doesn't abide by the, by the uh, IWC regulations, they will be sanctioned by the United States. Ever since 1986, that, that law has been in place. And every year, the President of the United States says, well, let's well, not upset the economic apple cart. What I'll do is I'll send a strongly worded letter of condemnation to Japan and Norway telling them to obey the law. And every year, Japan and Norway look at the letter, throw it in the garbage can, and it's business as usual. So we have the laws, they're simply not being enforced. Last year, uh, Scott and I went and gave a talk to the FBI Academy in Quantico, and one of the uh, agents there, well, you know, Sea Shepherd's operating, uh, is, uh, walks a pretty fine line when it comes to the law. 